Good morning, everyone. Um, a couple of announcements. June 6th, we're having our annual meeting uh, combined with our deacons and our elders. It will be an opportunity to uh, have several who are leaving their, their respective boards and then uh, hopefully start to welcome a few of the others. Um, we are tremendously short on elders at this point. Um, literally half a board. Um, so don't all rush at the same time. But we do need some help in the, in the way of elders to help run the church. So if anybody is interested, uh, talk to Bobby Beck. Uh, she'll be glad to uh, give you lots of things to do. We have a couple of announcements. People need to come up first. Is going to be Linda. I just wanted to announce to the congregation that um, the church office was notified that um, a longtime member, uh, Jean Markovitz, passed away on the 6th of May, last um, Friday, Saturday, last Saturday. Um, her service and visitation is being held at Givenish in Cinnaminson on Route 130. Um, visiting hours are from 10 to 11, and there will be a service at Givenish at 11, and um, internment will be at Lakeview immediately following. So if anybody's interested in attending, oh, and Nedra will send out more details. I'm sorry, this coming Saturday, this coming Friday. I'm doing this without any. This coming Friday, the service is at Givenish, yes, at 11 o'clock. Um, Nedra will be sending out more details, including um, the obituary, which is very interesting. Um, Jean worked lots of years at the Riverton Library. So um, I think, matter of fact, it's either her painting or her husband's painting that's ha actually hanging in the library. Um, so I just wanted to announce that. We also lost a, uh, one of the longtime Palmyra police officers this past week. His name is Mike Ludlow. Um, not a member of our church or anything like that, but he was a Palmyra police officer. He was only 57, so keep him in your prayers. Um, next is Lynn. Just a great big thank you to all of you who supported Treasure Day those who donated, those who shopped and bought, those who worked yesterday, and a special shout out to my pricing team because they put in a lot of extra hours. That would be Cindy Harker, Sheila McMenamin, and Mike Gilbert, and a big thanks to them. I do not have a total for you yet. We're still in the process of collecting and counting, but I think especially considering the weather conditions, we made out pretty well. There's still a lot of stuff downstairs if you would like to go down and browse, we dropped everything to half price at 12.30 yesterday, so ignore the tags on what's left over. If anything catches your eye, there's a, the cash box is there. Just make a donation and take it home, and then I don't have to box it up and get rid of it. So please go down and see something you really, really can't live without. Thanks, Lynn. Terry, Paul. Good morning. Um, kind of a sister operation to uh, what went on down in the basement and the, the sales of items. Um, we have Calvary Cafe outside, and uh, we opened yesterday with a prayer um, that uh, the Heavenly Father would uh, nourish us uh, as we uh, nourish the community, um, not only in feeding them, um, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but um, also to uh, nourish them with the Holy Spirit showing through us by being friendly and just, it's a, not only is it a fundraiser, but it's a great chance for us to reach out to the community and uh, show that uh, we are alive and well here at Calvary and uh, try to, to uh, show what the, uh, what the Holy Spirit um, puts out in us. 
So anyway, we started serving uh, pretty much right at 8 a.m., um, believe it or not. Hot dogs, bratwurst, pulled pork. Um, and then uh, I'll give you total a little later. So we have like 10 positions, 10 stations, not stations, but people had to man 10 spots. And we probably ended up, um, had about 15 or so people uh, who, who contributed. And I have to thank them because they made my... All I did was run around and replenish stock. Um, everybody else, what? <laughs> everybody else uh, kind of really pitched in, and uh, we had a great sales staff. Uh, one person in particular was kind of vocal, but uh, <laughs> we'll let you guess who that was. Uh, so anyway, those fifteen people were uh, really key to to making this come off. So. We sold 312 hot dogs, 84 brats, 40 pounds of pulled pork, uh, 150 mark pretzels, 200 sodas, 104 waters, and 100 bags of chips. Um, the total we took in was $1,845. Um, the deacons graciously granted us a budget of $800, which, believe it or not, I wasn't really working for that. Um, I did this the first time last year and uh, kind of got a feel for it, but I was just buying what I thought um, we needed, and amazingly, the total for that came to $799.70, and, and so I was 30 cents off, so anyway, yeah, so, so um, we netted $1,045. And we have a few sodas left over. That's pretty, we pretty much sold out at 12, 15, um, everything. Like, it's amazing how I look at my watch and it's 9.45 and like we're really like selling lots of hot dogs and brats. Steve? Oh, I love you, Steve. <laughs> it was close. Our, our, Our prince of pulled pork uh, kind of complained on his positioning in the line because it was a hot dog, <laughs> brats, pulled pork. And our ladies. Um, much different next year. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we netted $1,045. And um, oh, yeah, so we have some sodas left over. If you'd like to buy them, just 50 cents a can after, right after. I have to get out of here pretty quick. So like if you want something, just. Scoop back there up on the stage, and we'll take care of you. Thanks again, and uh, look forward to next year. So the deacons get 30 cents change. That's good, though. <laughs> it's been several weeks since the uh, PNC had an update, so Jerry's going to do that next. Yeah, the pastor nominating committee continues to, to meet each week. Uh, we meet on Sunday after worship service, Mondays when need arises. Uh, Steve Gilbert and I serve as co-chairs on the committee. Uh, if you have any questions on our work progress to date, um, feel free to reach out to me or to Steve. Uh, but we are uh, blessed with a bounty of candidates. Uh, we received actually another two batches of uh, PIFs, personal information forms, over the last two weeks. And the total number of candidates that are being considered and have been considered thus far by the committee is 93. Um, we actually have an interview scheduled for Thursday this week with uh, one of the candidates. Um, we hope to be scheduling interviews with a few more in the coming weeks. Um, but over the summer, we expect to, to complete a lot of the um, initial run through, I guess, of, of candidates and, and interviews. and. We'll continue to uh, search for the pastor that uh, the Lord feels would serve us best at this church. <laughs> and Terry's back. <laughs> kind of like it up here. But I'm not doing the sermon. I'm not doing the sermon. <laughs> Um, just wanted to give a shout out last weekend, uh, last Sunday afternoon, three o'clock, we had, we keep getting a bigger and bigger turnout for our live music worship services, um, not only from the people, you people within the church, but the community. Um, we had, 
Really? Philadelphia, wow. We're inter, inter, uh, what, interstate now. So um, just wanted to give you a heads up. We're planning to be in the 4th of July parade um, this year. So look for us there. Thanks. I promise we're almost done. <laughs> May 21st is going to be our spring congregational meeting. It's going to be immediately following our worship service. We're going to be electing officers uh, for deacons and elders at that time, so please hang out during that time for uh, our congregational meeting, May 21st. That would be next Sunday. Um, we are having Pentecost Sunday on the 28th, and uh, there is a, a jar out in the narthex for donations which go to the chickens. I'm sure that uh, Georgie will have a whole lot more to say about that, but if you have any, we need to take some, some donations because they need to be fed and we need to get some eggs out of that field. And um, so if anybody is, uh, wants to contribute to that, the, the jar is out in the narthex. So Georgie's doing an excellent job with that. And uh, her chickens are coming home to roost at any point in time. And uh, so having said that, happy Mother's Day to all you chicks out there. <laughs> Let us worship God. Happy Mother's Day. It's uh, good to finally be here. I want to, I understand that the choir has elected uh, Dave to use the hook if necessary, so I, I hope we go through this really well. Let us wor uh, worship our God with our responsive reading today. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are you, are your deeds. Because of your power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you, and we praise you. You praise to your name. Bless our God, O people. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. If I had cherished inequity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Please uh, pray with me the, uh, a, a liturgy for Mother's Day. Lord, in this day set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life by your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood, whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else. We thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cried for us and kissed away our pain. We, thank, we pray that our lives may be reflected, the love they showed us, and that they would be pleased to be called our mom. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Sing the Mighty Power of God. <laughs>
as we come to worship our God and Savior, let us freely confess our sins so that we may be cleansed. Ever-present God, we confess to you that our unloving thoughts and deeds, we live by standards that we could bend and break in our own favor, but glory something you did. We find it hard to love everyone for so many act in unloving ways. It is easier to treat people as things and to listen to their needs. We withhold ourselves rather than offer our lives, even for our friends. We hoard the gifts you want instead of doing them. Cleanse us from those destructive ways, freeing us to love as you love us, we pray. As sure as we live, God is with us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Christ, we are forgiven. Let us freely give from the amount of bounty we have received through God's grace with our offerings. Dear Lord, please accept these gifts to be used for your glory. Amen. in our church when we ask if anyone has a joy or a concern that they would like to share with us today for prayer. Um, I'm going to start by asking for prayers for my oldest sister, 
she has uh, reached another stage in her journey with Alzheimer's. Um, and I want to ask for prayers for her uh, peace. And also, I would like to ask for prayers for her caretakers, uh, especially my niece, Ellen, and her husband, Gordon. Anyone else? Similar prayers for Anyone else? Yeah. Um, similar prayers for my daughter's father-in-law. I want to pray for uh, a gentleman named Arulio who's run a restaurant in Delanco for about 30, 40 years, and uh, he's been suffering from cancer. His family is just lovely, and... Um, I just pray for his health. His name is William? His first name is Aurelio. Aurelio. And I'm not even going to try the last name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm giving him a grateful thank you to God. I had a near miss traffic accident a week ago. Wow. And for a few seconds, I thought I had it. There was a car coming straight for me. And I did a quick swerve. And here I am. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um, two things. Um, um, they'll be a little general, so no names, but they are close to me. Uh, one, I just want as a joy. I want to thank the community here and all of my friends, um, whether that's in the choir or um, just in general. All, everybody that we we rub shoulders with in this community. Um, people are very generous and very kind, and I'm just grateful to be. Uh, with a extended family who um, think of others, and I hope that I can do the same for others in return. So thank you. Uh, number two is that um, I would just like to ask for prayers for those who suffer with addiction and depression. Um, and a lot of those people suffer silently. Uh, they're enduring silently, whether that's successfully or not. Um, but I just want to ask that you keep those who uh, are low uh, when we don't know it in, in your thoughts. So thank you. I have a joy and a concern. So I'll start with the joy. Um, yesterday I went to my daughter's graduation from Ryder University. So that is fabulous. Four years down. Um, and then in August she starts at the PhD program um, that she was accepted into at Temple. So another five years looking ahead. Um, the concern that I have, um, I just recently found out that my younger sister, she just turned 50, she had a routine colonoscopy. Um, they had to biopsy, and she does have cancer. So if um, I, I would ask for prayers for my younger sister, Kim. A joy that, as Terry alluded to, we were able to serve our community during Treasure Day. Lots of people came down to the basement, and we tried our best to help them and make them feel welcome and appreciated. A concern, our sister Kathy, her husband Phil is not doing real well. He's been having all kinds of lung issues and now is most likely going to have a lung transplant. So please keep both Phil and Kathy in your prayers while they go through this long process. No? And prayers for our sister Jane Price, who um, broke a bone in her foot, and she hasn't been able to come for a few weeks. So we're hoping for a speedy recovery for Jane. Anywhere else? 
done. We have a long list of concerns today with health and cares for people in general, um, daughters in law, members of our congregation. The community brings us joy today. Um, volunteers uh, are certainly a blessing to the church today. So please remember in your prayers, Myra Jean, Ellen, and Gordon, Nedra's father-in-law, her daughter's father-in-law, um, Aurelio, the restaurateur, who are friends of the, of, of the Pauls. Thanks be to God that an accident didn't happen. I know that I've been pretty happy about a couple of them myself lately. Thank you for the community here that it came out and supported us and, and were treated with generous kindness. There, thank you to our extended family here and at home. Please pray for, the, it, uh, pray for those suffering addiction and depression. These are silent killers when you think about it. A lot of times they're very, you know, they're in our community and we don't know it but they can kill us. Thank you for the daughter's graduation from college. What a wonderful milestone. Um, at the same time, there's great concern for Kim and her cancer diagnosis. Joyce that we were able to serve our, com our community while we had concern for Kathy and her husband and his lung problems. These are serious and we need our and they need our prayers. Also for Jane Price as she suffers with a broken foot. How annoying that can be when you're unsteady on your feet to begin with. It's a terrible thing. Let us keep all of these things and the joy of Mother's Day in our hearts as we say our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Before we read our uh, New Te Testament reading, I thought I'd give you a little background on um, the readings today. Um, before I started to write all this, I went, I asked Nedra for the liturgy reading for this Sunday. Uh, and then I went to a Bible commentary I have at home that was published, mind you, in 1927, so there's some room for wiggle there. I updated a little. In the responsive reading for Psalm 66, Halley sums it up this way. Praise God. Hold him in awe. Halley uses the word fear, and I think that today has some negative connotation, so I like the word awe better. Sorry. Sing, sing, sing. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. God's eyes deserve all praise. In the Acts reading that we're going to, to uh, do, um, finds Paul in Athens, Greece, the home of philosophers that, still, that we still know today, of Pericles, Demosthenes, if I, I didn't say it right, and Plato. Athens was also the home of great literature and art that we still admire today. Greek architecture is still a, a benchmark for beauty. The Parthenon still stands on its hill and is visited by masses of people. Our own Jefferson Memorial in Washington is an example of Greek architecture today. Paul had a tough time in Athens, but he did find some willing to listen and learn more. The reading from Acts. So that they could search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him, him we live and move and have our being. And even some of your own poets have said, for we are, too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by us at the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of God. Please pray with me that the message I bring will be pleasing to God's ears and that you, the congregation, will find something useful and redeeming. I also ask that you take a minute to remember all the blessings that touch your life. Amen. Much of the first paragraph of my talk was covered by Terry and Lynn and uh, others. I just want to uh, emphasize how blessed this church is. Uh, last week, Reverend Gaskell commented on our music program and how wonderful it is, and that's certainly true. Yesterday, the amount of volunteers and the work that they did the pricing team started months ago and priced everything in the basement. It is a wonderful um, representation of their willingness to serve the church and God. The chickens, which God makes fun of, <laughs> the monies that we collect will be sent to the Presbyterian Hunger Program and will hopefully help to bring some families out of poverty. One of the uh, pictures in one of the magazines I get is your mission person. Um, said that it showed a picture of a woman holding a chicken. And she had actually been taught how to farm chickens and ended up being able to send uh, her older children to college. So it, it's an excellent program. Think of it as a birthday uh, gift to the church for Pentecost, which is, of course, counted as the birthday of the, of the Christian uh, church. Um, from our reading, to go on, from our reading, we find that Paul must have been a pretty good speaker. 
to be able to engage the council of Athens for his talk. The Athenians were wholly given to idolatry. Their gods were kept on Mount Olympus and worshipped in beautiful temples or boxes, whichever you choose to call them. However large that temple was, the inside that the God represented inside was a stone idol. They were given sacrifice and gifts, placated. You give me, uh, I give you this, you give me that. We'll be even. Thank you. Paul based his lesson on the unknown God that the Greeks had added to their list of gods and fear they'd forgotten one. Paul emphasized that God doesn't need anything, nothing from us. He is the giver. He wants our love and our prayers, but we cannot put God in a box. God does not live in this building. We take him with us when we leave. We cannot bribe him with our gifts. We receive forgiveness when we ask by God's grace. I think many of us are a little like the Athenians. Developing our spiritual growth takes work, and a God box might appeal. It's hard to learn to hear and sometimes difficult to do as we should. Maya Angelou, ooh, let me get my pen, said, uh, I'll paraphrase, if you listen in the si silent quietude, you might be able to hear the voice of God. He is always there when we need him. It is... Um, when it, it's a great thing to know and to really accept and to teach our children. As many of you know, I'm blessed with a large family. As I have aged from baby sister to little sister to grandmother, I've had the privilege of watching many babies grow and blossom. My sons and their cousins have grown and married, and some of their children are adults with children. Watching babies grow is totally amazing. Each little milestone is a wonder. But they go on and on, their little fingers and toes, the curve of their cheeks and that wonderful baby smell. Babies are the continuity of our families and the human race. My mother was the central figure of my upbringing and in that of my sisters. The war took my dad away as an essential worker, and then his employment in shipyards in New York kept him away most of the weeks. When he did begin to work in Camden, we were expected to be at the dinner table at five o'clock with our hands washed when he came in. Family life centered on my dad. I'm not sure that the perfect con family of the 1950s or 60s actually existed for most Americans, but they seem relatable to me somehow. Today's kids probably find them unreal. Mothers don't dress for dinner in scoops, skirts, hose, and heels. Dinner is timed often to fit to the practice schedules of our children. It seems to me, though, today, that dads are very much more involved in the lives of their kids, from the delivery room to the nursery room and forward. I went to my Bible index looking for um, a reference to motherhood. I found Martha and Mary, but no motherhood. Proverbs 33 relates the attributes of a good wife. Honestly, the woman could be a CEO of an international company. Uh, after a list of chores, verse 28 says, her children show their appreciation and her husband praises her. Verse 31, give her credit for all she does. She deserves the respect of everyone. I know there are women who seek to have it all, but I don't know of many who manage it well. The families I know still deal with behavior that can get on your last nerve. Foot stomping, cries of no fair, excuses like everybody else does it, or has it, or wears it, eye rolling. Even kids off to college can cause angst. 
sometimes just because they're not there. I often sit and enjoy the window panels behind me. I use them as a little checkup or crib sheet um, for my sight journey. We need to listen in order to hear, in order to know that the Lord is with us in the same way. As much as our, we teach our children the ABCs, we need to listen to them, to develop a relationship where they can share their fears and problems. Encouraging virtues only go so far uh, for anybody. Confidence is built in the absence of bullying and the reality of being loved. The second panel represents Jesus' baptism and reminds me that I am part of the Christian family and can rejoice in that. Jesus Christ is my life and always will be. If I were other than a Presbyterian, I might ask for an amen. <laughs> the center panel uh, represents one of my favorite Bible stories, the woman at the well. There are many possible lessons um, to be learned by this story, but for today's purpose, I think of, a, of acceptance. Jesus didn't bully her or put her down. She was other, different, not Jewish, and perhaps not to totally proper. Like the victim in the story of the Good Samaritan, she was a person that should be shunned. Jesus tells us to tend to sheep. Remembering this and teaching our children to look to the heart of a person and to accept differences is a very important aspect of a good character. Christ's final commandment to us was to love God and to love our neighbor as, as he loved us. As a little aside here, I have really noticed and rejoiced when we have had the teenage volunteers here. They are often a mixed bag of ethnicities and are very supportive of one another. We could wish that the wider world uh, would follow their lead. The fourth panel represents to me the adult Jesus going about his business, teaching us to love one another and to care for one another. Raising a child to be a useful and fulfilling adulthood is the reward a parent gets. That and grandchildren. We need to be able to be in society, in community, rather than in isolation. As we know, as Christians, we have a safe place in the Lord. Our children need to know that there is a place where they are cared for and loved. The kind word can make anyone's day. The fifth panel shows Christ in the garden before his arrest. The Lord knows we all need prayer. Prayer is such a gift. Prayers of thanks are really important, but their prayers asking for help is no less dear to our God. God is a great listener. Right when um, life gets me down, I can remember, um, <laughs> I can remember telling one of my sons he was drowned until he was 25. <laughs> it might have even been 50. <laughs> um, I was so angry and disappointed, whatever, that I was unable at that point to deal. I found that I can go apart and have a good rant just between me and the Lord. Then I can ask him for his, thank him for his patience and, um, and for listening and ask for his help and wisdom to help me to develop a plan for my problem. Sometimes kids aren't the only people who need a time out. In closing, we need to remember that God is close. He is not shut up in some beautiful box to debride with expensive sacrifices. God is close. We only have to ask. We only have to love him and recognize his grace for our unearned salvation. We need to let God out of whatever box he may be in and keep it uh, where we might keep him and recognize the Lord in our daily lives. We need to rejoice in his presence and let his spirit help and guide us to a deeper understanding of his wonderful grace. One of my favorite Bible verses is Micah 6, 8. What the Lord requires of us is this, to do what is just, to show constant love, and to live in humble fellowship with our God. Amen.
like to find my program. Go out into the world and rejoice in it. May God continue to bless and keep us. Close my Angelou again. What a wonderful day. I haven't seen this one before. May the peace of the Lord be with you.